All right, welcome, folks. We have a very, very special and sad episode today. We have the main man, the myth, the block party legend mm. as our guest, Seth Kushner. Thank you. This feels this feels weird. I'm not the I'm not the host anymore. This is this is no longer. I'm no longer on this this podcast. I'm here. You here to explain that why I'm you not are. here. You are, but I'm not here. But we got we got to introduce the the new co-host. I feel like I just got here and I was the new co-host, but now we have another new co-host. You do, Greg Wolf. Thank you guys for being here. I'm actually honored to be in the presence of a first round draft pick. Uh, but then for you, obviously <laughs> being the first uh, curator of the block party, uh, I am obviously in awe as well, Seth. I've been on the block party with you. Uh, since you started it a few times back when it was in a closet over there at the other station. And so uh, I'm honored to be a part of this as well. But uh, I'm just I'm excited to be a part of this whole thing. I've been watching, been listening for years now. Um, and I'm excited that you have a great opportunity. Um, for the people out there that do not know, um, Seth is uh, going over to the other coast to Los Angeles as he has finally secured his dream job in the radio industry working for K-Rock, which is a huge uh, legendary heritage station in the radio world and so to go from uh, market 20 so to speak here in tampa to number is la one or two i always confuse with new york yeah. so still man you're in the top two that yeah. is a a huge accomplishment i'm super excited for you uh but kudos to you for all the 100 plus episodes you've put in on the block party and the amazing <laughs> interviews you've done and to have kobe here with us it's, it's just amazing so congratulations to you and kobe uh, i appreciate the uh, the warm welcome well yeah this i mean this 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 part leaving this job sucks. So I I had you know Brian Breesman who you know I, produces this whole thing. He books all of the guests. He sure. even, he even booked me today. So <laughs> the guys are out of town. What do you want from yeah, us? No, it's holidays. Hey. The guys are out of town. What do you want from us? But you know uh, I had the offer to to go to California and all that. And this year out of this is the fourth year I've done the block party. This is the year that they wanted to take it to the next level sure. and make them all in person. Right. You know, um, you've been doing zoom calls we've been and doing zoom COVID and, times. Yeah. And, all, all sorts of stuff. And I had on JBB last year, right after they lost the cup final and yep. he was in a good mood, I think, cause he had the Nick Paul deal locked up in his head already. Oh yeah. So <laughs> he comes in to where we're recording and he's like, you guys are recording here. This is, this is horrible. It was in the closet, right? Yeah. Over by Fran's office yeah. in the corner. And yeah. he's like, this is absolutely horrible. And he starts telling us, and he, we re rearrange everything. I was like, this this guy can do it details. all. He's about he, the details. He had a vision. So so we switch it around. And now, so this year, you can see we have backdrop. This is like the Beautiful. one. Beautiful. Right, this is where the, the families hang out. And, yeah. and Kobe's on it, which is, I thought, I thought that the podcast, in order to keep going, I didn't think that it needed to be me still talking to the athletes. I thought it needed another dy dynamic. Sure. And when I... I asked if they could bring Kobe on, and then when Breesman told me that Kobe was going to do it, uh, I was I was so stoked. And he's been just like I can tell he's he was a great teammate. Like from the first day we recorded the block party, Kobe's like setting up a a tent to block the sun that was coming in, you know, during our Sergey interview, and nice. he's stepping up. And we talked like we would talk, you know, on the phone for a few minutes and text just about sure. the episodes. We scheduled a sleepover, but Seth pulled out. <laughs> I, just, I, sorry, I, it's just like I don't, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm just, I, I feel like this might one time to explain, you, you know. You can explain I'm, what you need to explain, yeah, man. It's I just, just like I, your I, final words here. Yeah, so it's like, oh, God. So <laughs> so I, so I it was going to the next level this yeah. year, and so it, so it sucked to walk away. And this was a very, very, very part-time gig. Sure. But I considered not even taking the job in L.A. just to keep doing this. Oh, wow. Which would have been so stupid. That says a lot. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, you got to take those opportunities when they come to you. Right. right? I, I would have needed to find, you know, like another job, a full-time job here. But I love this so much. Sure. I love this, um, you know, uh, doing it with Girardi and kicking it off with him and having that dynamic of being able to have, you know, Marty and Vinny and, and Hedman and guys, you know, like, I think Kobe's going to be able to get guys like Pointer and some other guys on this podcast that haven't been on just because, you know, he knows them and has that relationship. And I think that that's key. That's key to keeping this uh, block party fresh. And uh, I'm I'm happy you're taking over, man. But it's it's definitely, it's I definitely hurt. cried. Hurt. But you're the, always going to be a part, part of it, man. I mean, again, if you go back and listen to how many episodes? Like 100 and maybe 18, 19. Those will live on forever, though. So when people can go back years later and listen to some of those early podcasts, they will always have Seth Kushner on them. Well, let's so. hope so. But yeah, but I'm texting Breezer to get playoff tickets, you know. Well, and, that's a different story. Yeah, so. When they make the, you know, you go to Hollywood and then you write a big manuscript, you yes. know, about the block party and they make a movie about it. Yeah. You know, well, 
I tell you what, at, at some point, you know, not every, obviously hockey's not the biggest thing in the world. Not everybody knows about it. Not every, some people are like, oh my God, it's, can you do the blog party? That's cool. Then like on a national stage, you know, this station that hired me in Los Angeles, they don't care at all. Right. But I think at some point one day, not that I have, I'm not that I'm trying to work for any other team, but I feel like this podcast will do something for me. And I don't know what that is, but I feel like it'll, it'll advance my career some way, somehow. I would think so, especially being in the radio industry for as long as you have and have channeled that to a podcast, because again, that's the world we live in now is the podcast world. But to go back to that terrestrial radio, having the podcast experience, I think that's only going to make you a better producer and a better person that's working with this new team in K-Rock. So I think all that's going to do is develop you as a person and as a professional. Well, no, and I appreciate that. And this is the coolest thing about the podcast is, you know, having done radio for, you know, my whole life, you never know if people listen to the radio for the music for you, for your host, for uh, interviews, for whatever, a girl, but. for a girl, just because somebody left the radio on, you know, people have to seek this out. Sure. People have to want to listen to the blog party and they're not going to listen to something they don't like. So the feedback that I'd get every week, you know, that we get people love Kobe. Kobe's not on social media. I sent him screenshots. Is there a reason for that, Kobe? I, it was like a Philadelphia thing. I just, when I was in Philly playing for the Flyers, yeah. it was kind of like right at the beginning of all the Socials. social media stuff. And I just kind of made a conscious decision to like, I'm not going to do it, okay. you know, because it was like, you know, I was kind of young and I needed to like insulate myself from some negativity. Understood. And I, I, it's, I, I feel like I missed the boat and I just never got back on it. I mean, it's never too late, Kobe. Never too late. I, I would think too, because you know you have people within these walls that can get you verified instantly on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, and but Twitter. I don't want to pay the eight bucks now. You know, that's you it. well, is that done? <laughs> I thought that that went away. Like I thought it was a huge failure. And I they're think, like, no, they're working on different color check marks for the people that pay. All is right. that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Because there were people that were making fake accounts that looked like the president and Donald Trump, and they had the check mark because they paid the eight dollars, <laughs> and then it became they were tweeting these outrageous things. It was like, okay, this is not working. So I don't know if that's going to hold true or not. But I think uh, again, the fan base out there would love to interact with you. Well, on if if I did join Twitter, I would have the cheapo check mark next okay. to my name. I think that's you fine. Know? <laughs> yeah, non paid one. But but people have a lot of good feedback for Kobe, and I you know I try to I try to give it to them when they have it. So uh, just people have embraced all aspects of this, and really the. The biggest thing for me was when Girardi left yeah. during COVID. So I, we had done 20 episodes. And when Girardi went back to Canada, I was like, all right, this is over. Right. I said, okay, cool. I got to do a podcast sure. with Girardi. We had some good interviews. And, you know, Breesman called me and, you know, said, all right, we're going to keep it going. Absolutely. Yeah. Was, what? Here we are. And, and you know, I it took me a while to find my way, but I but I thought that I did, and I felt like I carved out a good path, and them giving me, you know, JBB after they won the Stanley Cup, and then yeah. season two started off with Stammer. Yeah. And, you know, they they, they know how much I love Stammer. Of He's, course. like, my favorite player. So the, the fact that they trusted me with Cooper, like, Vazzy. Yeah. All the Amazing. guys, all the top guys in the organization, like they put me with, they trusted me, and that that meant a lot, you Absolutely. know, because that's the, those the guys mean everything, you know, to this organization. So um, when they let me have time, because you don't see Vazzy sitting down for fifteen minutes with right. anybody, you don't see Stammer sitting down for half hour interviews. Yet that's why I think this is so special. That's why I think every professional sports team should be doing this, sure, because you get to know these players. So and our fans want that because again, when we do events or community events here with the Lightning. It's limited time, right? Like even if you get an interaction with a Kobe or, or you know, one of our players, it's a, it's a short interaction. So to be able to sit them down and talk about the off the ice stuff, talk about their background, their interests, that is the stuff our fans want to know because it it humanizes them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I'm, my curiosity is, Kobe, where did the interest on your behalf come into to jump into the podcasting world? So when I did the interview with you, I think it was a couple years ago. Um, no, just last year, actually. Was it la last right year? After no, you but we did, we did a different one uh, before, I think. Oh, the one when you texted me the kissy face emoji? Yes, yes, the very first one. Yeah. So, honestly, I got like yeah, a... That, yeah, that's yeah, a true yeah. story. I'll, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it after. But, it's okay. um, and then we did the, the second one, and I was just thinking, I was like, man, that, you know, that might be kind of fun. Uh, I felt like me and Seth had a little bit of chemistry, sure. and I like talking about... I like talking hockey and it just real it's just it was something that I'm passionate about. It keeps me in the game. Yep. And I felt like me and Seth kind of play off each other. Mm -hmm. And it just 
you know, it was, and I'm, I'm retired. Right. And, uh, like I'm so I'm like, like, like you know, like I'm pretty flexible and, and it, it worked out really well. It did. And you're doing radio stuff too now doing some color with Michigan. So, awesome. I mean, you're really, yeah. I mean, it, I appreciate that you're embracing all of it. Like you, yeah. like I said, you've been a, you've been a great teammate through the podcasting and not that there's an incredible amount of work that goes into it, but there just has to be minor communication sure. and, and all that. And, and Kobe's had that, you know, he called me at like seven 45 this morning to talk about, you know, our Rudy interview. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it's just, just for me, I, you get a glimpse kind of on, on how these guys were able to play in the league so long and able to have success when you, you know, kind of see how they prepare for things outside of the game. So right. now I see why Kobe was a first round draft pick and then got shipped off to Ottawa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot, there was a lot in between yeah, there. Just but. a little, just a little bit in between there. Just but, a little. Yeah. Seth, you're probably the same way as me, but like some of these guys, you know, I was teammates for with them for a, a long time, mm -hmm. and then you sit down and you start talking to guys. And you still just peeling the onion back a little bit. And you find out things you you never really knew. Like, you know, I thought I knew Sergey really well, and we sat down with Sergey. My first interview uh, we did yeah. together, and you know, there's things about Sergey I'm finding out that I didn't really know. And sure, I think that was really really cool to me, and something that kind of motivated me. Like, I, you know, I really want to like find out about these guys. Like, what makes them tick? Like, why are they doing this? Sure. But, you know, when I was thinking about this interview with you, Seth, like I was thinking like, and you guys both have radio backgrounds, we radio do. history, but like Seth, I think people would find interesting, like why radio? Well, how did you get into it? Like, what was your, oh, what was your man. stepping stone? It was, I was just, I was, I was 19 and, um, I don't know. Uh, I'd always just listened to the radio growing up with my dad, you know, as far as listening to sports on there and everything like that. And, um, I just, I, I wanted to get into it somehow. I just liked music. And so there was a station 97 X here in town that played alternative music. And, uh, I got an internship there when I was 19 mm -hmm. and I was there for 19 years, you know? So I don't, I never got into radio to talk or to be a host or to be a producer. I just liked music. I wanted to be around it. Maybe I wanted to be a DJ, but it kind of morphed into, into this. And I'll say when I left radio, I was a co-host and producer and this lock party was really my first hosting gig, like the first real, like, like on your own. Cause yeah, obviously uh, with Fisher and boy, you yeah. are, you consider yourself more of a co-host of that show. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Co-host. So yeah. Fisher kind of ran the, yeah. ran the ship and you were just kind of like the yeah. skipper, so to speak. Yeah. But I always considered you a, I always considered you back then on 97 X more as a co-host. I didn't consider you the secondary guy. Oh. I felt that your personality and your, your charm was what made that show kind of what it was well this is why you're, you know this is why you're so great i mean I'm yeah. just being honest, you know, i listened to you obviously you know we we go way back yeah um but i always felt i didn't feel like you were the side guy well this is i mean for me to sit down with cooper right you know for them to sit down with cooper and for him to walk in the room and him to tell me that you know i got shitty handwriting and then i <laughs> and then i go and then i was like hey who wrote those plays on the board behind you and he's like yeah, okay, he's like, that was me. And right. I was like, well, I can't read any of that. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you're right. And I was like, I'm sitting down and I'm talking to John Cooper and I'm right. responsible for setting the tone and the mood. And there's not anybody else there. I'm right. not, you know, as far as like, you know, production, JP and L, everybody's there, but I don't have anybody else there, you know, bounce stuff off of. And so when it's just me and Cooper and then I get that done and then it's out there and people like it. Right. And like, that's, that's the greatest feeling. That's Absolutely. the greatest feeling in the world. So that's why for, you know, hosting, hosting, that's, that's, that's kind of how I see it. So, and that's, that's stuff that I never, I never did before. I never had in my career. And I, I'm, I, I felt like I proved that I could do it. I know you've a hundred percent proved that you could do it. And, um, it's uh, it's exciting to see you know you come from that ninety seven X era to moving on to other stations and other shows to you know getting involved with the lightning and like you said now you've got a hundred plus amazing block party podcast under your belt and that's now sprung board you to Los Angeles of all cities yeah uh, to to be on one of the biggest radio stations in the country that's a huge testament man yeah. so you should be proud of that thank you sure. thank you so lightning you're like what's how did you get like everyone. I always find people. You're gonna love this answer. You know, I'm gonna let you finish your question. I, I, I don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't strike me as a guy that grew up playing hockey. <laughs> Something about you, to me, just tells. Oh, wait, hold maybe on, not yeah. necessarily <laughs> an athlete. Don't I don't know. Just because I, I, you, you said I, you know, my sweater was too tight one time. This is my physical today. Everything checked out. Okay. Okay. Right? So I played baseball. As okay. long as it's not like uh, you, you don't take your top off physical kind of no, thing. You no, know? I, have an, I have an iron deficiency. That's it. Okay, okay. okay. Well, <laughs> let's get some red meat in you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but like, how did you come to hockey? Like 
everyone's got a story, yep. you know, whether it's like someone came to their first game or they stumbled upon it. Like yep. what brought you to hockey? You ready for this, Kobe? Um, Here we go. Is, this is great. This is this is the a true answer. And I'm glad we talked about my radio background first. Didn't grow up watching hockey, grew up a Chicago sports fan, still kind of am. My parents were born there or lived there. I was born there. So rooted for the the Bears, the White Sox, the Bulls growing up, but never my family wasn't into the Blackhawks at all. Okay. So I didn't have any teams. I've lived in Florida the majority of my life. I didn't have any local teams that I rooted for, and I wanted the root for the Lightning. So we had, when Stammer got drafted in 08, mm -hmm. they brought Stammer into the studio for the radio station I worked for. Was so, that when we were doing our scene Stamkos campaign? Yeah. We were tooling them around. Yeah. Yep. They, uh, Greg was part of that marketing yes, stuff. Was. So they brought Stammer in, and then we had Hedman on the phone the next year, and then the Lightning were not good. So we got tickets to a lot of games. So I'm in my 20s and they're giving us, you know, the the la Chase Lounge tickets for every game with the free food. We're getting free ice cream and that's, you know, <laughs> whenever we want it. Cuz right. the lighting weren't good. They weren't selling out every night, but right. we were we were having a good time. Do you take advantage of the ice cream? We were, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was that was, up there. that was the best part. I'd get tickets, I'd bring my brothers. You know, we'd root for the Lightning and all that, but like that's how I got into it. Like the Lightning, you know, being so gracious and the, the tickets and over the years, too, it didn't stop. Right. Even when, like, like Mr. Vinnick took over and even when everything was sold out, the Lightning would still come in and give out jerseys when they had those to release, and they would still give you tickets, playoff tickets, yeah. mm -hmm. and all that. So, And then when I started doing the block party, I, I started learning. I learned the most about hockey the last three or four years. Absolutely. From, from talking to guys, from watching it, I just picked it up. And I, I was not confident at all before about knowing hockey. You know, when I did this podcast, it was never about the X's and O's. But, man, I, I feel like I've learned so much just watching and talking to, you know, guys like you and, and all that. I, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I got – like I said, I'm not trying to work in hockey, but I'm happy I got that education and have a better understanding because – you guys are a different breed, but it's it's like an inspiring breed. So it was very cool to, to work around. So I always like, when I think about you, I think, man, you are like, you do this podcast, but you were a fan. Like yeah. you love the team. Like you are one of those guys that, you know, maybe you, you came into it a little bit later in your 20s as a fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning, but you, now you're a fan. Yeah. Have, have, yeah. And hockey have you ever thought about like playing skating like where are you at with that like i feel like you go out to la i can hook you up with some people maybe yeah. put you in a beer league Let's go brother you know i feel like that would be a good way for you to mix in mix a bunch of, like meet a bunch skate? of people no okay. no and it's I, never too late seth never, like no. we can get you going i've wanted to jp and i we've done a lot of shows um over the years with the chirp and a couple of other things because the block party has given me opportunities to do more things here. And we've talked about going out on the ice, learning how to skate, having people shoot pucks at us, you know, all <laughs> sure. you know, all sorts of stuff that nobody ever, no, they're not letting us on the ice, no. you know? So, I mean, anything that involved the ice, is pretty much off limits. So we, we tried, we've talked about doing bits and all that, but no, I can't skate. Um, I appreciate the guys that do. I just no, never, there's no desire to go out and like, you know, shoot a puck. Yeah. I, I like to go out and like, catch a football, but there's no desire for me to ever go out and shoot. And I don't want to go out and be like Stammer or Kucherov and practice those moves at all. That's not it. I just, I love, I love the organization so much. Right. Uh, you know, and all these guys, most of these guys are really, really good dudes. So, you know, they're easy to root for and they're, they're part of this community. So you're transplanting from Tampa Bay to LA you know, I think people want to know, like, is are your allegiances also transferring? Are you going to no. be like a Kings fan no. or, a, you know, no, a, I a, hope a, not. A Ducks they, fan? I'm going to say, is, are, is the radio station involved with any of the sports teams over there that you know about? Um, I don't know. I, I know they've given away like Rams tickets on the air okay. and stuff. I haven't heard so much about the Kings, but okay. I, I am. And I am, I'm a lightning, blue, bro. I'm a lightning fan. I mean, there's really there, unless this ended poorly, which it's not, right. you know, unless they just kicked me out, which Breesman could make me cry. The guy, the, <laughs> the, the very Breesman who deals with, you know, who's dealt with the players yeah. for, he's been here forever. Ever. Yes. You know, and he, he has that trust with them to where if he's, you know, asked Stammer to come on the podcast right. and he's going to be like, Hey, listen, it'll, do this, it'll right. be, it'll be okay. You're, you know, you're going to be in good hands. Right. So, um, I don't know why I went into the whole Breezer thing again, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of the lightning because of you, because of Sonia, because of the fans, because of the people I've met on Twitter, because of Kobe, yeah. Breezer, everybody, JP. I mean, it's it's I'm a, I'm a that's that's why I'm a fan. I'm so I, you know I didn't I didn't get a you know I didn't get a Stanley Cup ring. People think that I'm on that level. I didn't get a Stanley Cup ring. At none of that stuff. But I don't care. Like I'm happy for the people that did. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for Kobe that got it. Like I'm happy JP got it. You know I have all these memories of of being here of of 
them winning the cup. Right. You know, one is there's an after party going on after the second cup. Brett Michaels is up there. You That's know, insane by the way. I don't, what? Yeah, this, it was insane. Brett Michaels is there. It's crazy. And all of a sudden, like Greg Here. walk. Greg walks in because he's like you know, and then everybody goes crazy. And Greg gets gets the crowd hyped up. Everybody's dancing. It and was just awesome. Like, like, Such wow. a great moment. And, and it, you were there for that. Yeah, I was there. I was like, wow, I I got to be part of that. I didn't yep. do anything. You know. I felt like I was part of the team, though. Like you I, are a part of the team. Yeah, right? I felt like I felt like it, I feel like everybody's a part of the team here. So, well, again, that starts from the top. You yeah, know, Mr. Vinick, Steve Griggs. Again, they they preach. You know, we are one team, but they follow that up with making you feel like you're yeah. a part of the team. Yeah, hundred percent. So I, I felt like I, I felt like I was part of the team, and uh, and it was a great feeling. And I've just genuinely, I was happy for everybody that got to experience that because you know you see those those moments where guys talk about having the best day of their life with the Stanley cup. You see those don't happen every year. Sure. So, um, you know, to be able to interview guys about that and, and to be around it is, you know, I'll never forget you that. Get a little teary eyed. Is yeah. that what the hot yeah. went down? I was wondering. Yeah. Kobe, yeah. you're making him emotional. Over yeah. Here, He's uncomfortable. Cause I know hockey players don't cry at all. Like even when they win the cup, I haven't seen one guy cry at all. So um, can you make me feel better? Did anybody cry when they won the cup? At least the first time yeah. has, did anybody? I, I can't tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> guys, 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 guys would kill me. Guys would kill me. Okay. But then that tells me that they probably have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, All right. It's I'm I'm very okay with it. Did Michael Jordan cry when he was holding? I remember a very. Vivid that was because his dad I'm, died. Right after his dad died. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, it was see, emotional. I've got no. I've got no reason. I've got no reason to be whimpering right now. But I I cried when I was you know telling Breezer that I had to give this up. Like yeah. I'm just telling you guys. Like I loved it. I've I've had a lot of great great jobs. I've done a lot of cool things. But nothing nothing was better than this. So. Well, that's amazing, man. It's, it's just it's, we're gonna miss you, bro. Yeah, but I promise we will do you right. I, I know. promise we will carry on the tradition and uh, you know continue to lay down the foundation that you have laid down. For I'm us. not. I'm not worried one bit. I'm excited for you guys, and um, you know, uh, I, hopefully, teary eyed, man. I, know. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Emotional. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, to, I, to ask me what my favorite interview is or something. I mean, yeah. Like, what was yeah. your favorite interview? I don't I mean, know. You've had a lot. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I mean, let's get let's go with your top three again because maybe that the best is tough. But I mean, you've interviewed a lot of our players, a lot of our personnel. Like you said, everybody from JPP all the way down to to Vazzy and Coop, and uh, you know who were the top three most memorable? Man, um, maybe I'll, not favorite. We'll say memorable. Yeah, I mean, Coop's in there, Stammer's in there. I've had three conversations with Esposito. You know, one he told me I look like Seth Rogen, <laughs> and he didn't know how to turn off the Zoom afterwards. And I have all that, like I recorded all that, and that's it's great. that's like that's a great moment. Uh, Belly, I had an incredible interview with last year. He just, you know, he's very talkative. Sure. Getting to know Pat Maroon's mom over the last couple of years, you know, JP and I had her on the chirp, yep. and uh, that that was cool. I I didn't have her on the block party, but just getting to know, you know, some of these people. So Cooper was Cooper was incredible. Sure, that was just he he knows when to turn it on, and he's a very charming guy. But you know, he knows when he's like. You know, he walks in, and tells you you have shitty handwriting. You're gonna, you know, he's a, hey, he, you're right. ready to mix it up. Right. You know, so I, I like that. Right. And Be is, real. That, is that the key with you? You got to come in and like insult you right away and get in your, you it's know, know. <laughs> that's well, that's oh, on the radio. I, I can do that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> on the radio, that's what, well, you know, like it's a, when I introduced you, like as uh, you know, Hall of Famer one time. You know, I was just trying to get a reaction out of you to start talking. You know, like that. That's kind of my thing. So when Cooper came in and did that, I was like, oh, you know, he's just getting, he's getting yeah. going a little bit. Yeah. So I wasn't like, oh my god, he hates my handwriting. Like, <laughs> I was like, you just gonna, know the vibe was sick. I go, this is going to be fun. So yeah, getting to talk to Stammer because I talked to Stammer after that first Stanley Cup, yep. after he scored that goal, yep. after everything. Yep. So to have that conversation sure. was just was was beautiful. So there there's two made in name, but you know Cooper Cooper Stammer um, definitely stand out. And and I'll say from the, doing the stuff with Kobe this year, yeah, Sergachev was was blew my mind amazing i had no idea much they, they circuitive walks in and kobe and him start talking about like their sticks and all this and you know, how they're curved and who they're using and all right. this and i was like wow well, look at these guys what are they talking about this is going to be good and then they you know they have a report where they're talking about you know things on the ice that i have no clue what's going on and you find out sergey's watching Dahmer and you know all these right. things and he's a very like Chilled. Kobe told me how how good of a dude he was, and I was like, I'm scared of him. Like he looks like a scary guy. <laughs> he looks like he could break your legs. He's, inti and, and, he's yeah, intimidating, yeah. absolutely. You know? and, but but he was such like a like a just a nice guy to sit down and talk to. And Kobe really prepped me and made me feel good about that. And and I'll walk away feeling really good about that because I think if I did Sergey on my own 
would never have gone as well as did with Kobe. Which is why I think it's a testament to what he brings, especially as a, as a former player. I mean, you bring perspective that he and I are not going to be able to bring out. I do have that a lot, but like I can't thank Seth enough, enough because you know he's really kind of made me feel confident. And every time I come in, you know, whether it's like my mind's like kind of like I don't know where to go with this. Like Seth has complete control up. over the interview. You Absolutely. know, he knows where it's going. Yep, he makes me feel very comfortable, and that's like part of it that was for me was like this guy's a pro, you know, I know that because I've done an interview with him. I've done interviews with him. I've met him. He's like a great guy and you know, he's going to take care of me. Even if I'm like really crappy, you know, (laughs) Seth is going to like, he's going to put me on his back and he's going to carry me to the finish line. And then I just got to throw in my few lines. Well, just know that uh, I got your back too. Kobe Kobe and Wolfie sounds good. It rolls off the tongue. You know, this is, this is great. It's going to be depressing when I see my name ripped off. Uh, uh, And I have to read it in game. They Uh, just, they just put my name on the the show, on the show this year. Like they, Right, it says like, like it says, Seth, I do it Seth in my pregame. Kobe. It's like, hey, check yeah. out the block party with you know Kobe and Seth Kushner. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so like <laughs> Seth, do I does do I have to uh, do I have to like rookie Hayes Wolfie like you rookie Hayes oh, me? No. You know, like oh wait, hold on, what did you do to rookie Hayes? <laughs> we went in the sauna for two hours together <laughs> and said, just talked, <laughs> just talked. <laughs> that was our we little. Don't hit. Have to go in the sauna. Yeah. I mean, we are in the wives' room and there is a changing table in there. I'll I don't say know, this. You know? I'll say this. I'll say this. Greg, <laughs> this is getting weird. Let's, hold on. <laughs> it's getting weird. Hold on though, because we talked about this. Unfortunately, I won't be here. Yeah. But we talked every single week, and I believe this will happen about doing an episode in the sauna with okay. a guest where it was going to be Kobe like and I in the mic. Towel. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were, we talked, we seriously talked to the engineers. They go, we can get mics that are going to, we're going to have to throw them away right. when they're done, but we can, we can use them. We talked about Espo. We talked about oh Braden God. point just in towels. That would be hilarious. Think about it. I like it. it's like guys are super comfortable, relax. Right. You're in the sauna, like smoky, you know, you know it was, chill. who do you think would do that out of all of our players? All of them. You all think they would? would? Oh yeah. All right. Oh, well, yeah. let's, you know, for your sake, Seth, we will make that happen. Sometime I would this love, season. I would love, I'll come from LA. If you guys would let me and just, just kind of jump in there. There. Yeah, <laughs> you just come walking in yeah. the sauna. That by would the be way, hilarious. By the way, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> All these guys don't even want to do the podcast. I don't know how many would be all for going in the, the sauna and doing it, but um, I think if Kobe convinces them, I'm sure it'll happen. I could see like Maroon or, or Pointer in there, so I all hope right. I hope that happens for you guys. Well, we <laughs> haven't had Pointer yet, right? I mean, nope. that's still a, a, a work in progress, so maybe that's the one that gets them in there. I, just chill after practice uh, and like sauna I, and up. The people want Braden Point. I'm I've got in close with a lot of Lightning fans as yep. you have on yep. Twitter and social media, and they they want Pointer. They want to hear from Pointer, you okay. know, and uh, that's one of, you know one of the last guys that they've they've annoyed me about. All so right. we'll so get you, him in there. You interact like a ton on social media. Yeah, and so do I. So you, you do too. Yes. So my wife, uh, she has social media, and I, and I looked at your Instagram, and I was like, Seth hates you that's your that's your <laughs> what, what is it that, is, that what is. is that he looked at my he looked yeah. at my instagram i had cool. to i was awesome. I, I told you you you're our research does your uh, wife you know, follow me at all does she i mean i don't know probably so yeah uh, why yeah. seth hates you that's a great yeah, question I, I was where like where did that come that, from <laughs> <laughs> it's just you being you or Dude, like i made that instagram you know how long ago what did people make instagram 15 uh, years ago 10 years ago maybe 10 maybe 10 okay i was 30 that's that's not great okay. <laughs> no. i don't know i was i was a little you're a late bloomer i was yeah i was just I wanted something that you could remember. I was very big on not putting radio station sure. stuff in my in my social media handles Smart. because you know that can go away. So I I don't know. I think I was just had. A, I think I was angry at the time. You're so I Seth I did Seth hate you, and I haven't changed it at all. And <laughs> not it's uncomfortable when people bring it up because I'm like I don't really know why, but it you know it sticks. So That's um, why I've kept mine the whole time. Yeah, yeah. In case you want to follow me, Kobe. What's, what's yours there? Third leg, Greg. But that was my radio name. <laughs> beep, beep, you can beep it edit, out. They can say yeah. it all they want. But listen, I ran track in high school, guys. I was the third leg of the 400-meter dash where you need the power and the speed in case you're falling behind in the race. And then, of course, people take that however they want. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, we've had, we, that's, that's a humble brag right there. That's a, yeah, that's I mean, a humble, is, humble it brag. That's, humble yeah, brag. Yeah, it's quite the story that he's made up over the years. So <laughs> that works out. But I'm going to go with this, you know. Yeah, okay. Listen, I uh, yeah, that's why I'm Seth hates you. But I, I love I love everybody. And you do. I, I and do. we love you too. I've, I've, I've changed a lot, but I, I can't change that. It's stuck. But tell your wife to throw me a follow. Maybe I could keep up with you. Well, maybe if I get so. Instagram, like, I in your happen. honor, I'll go like, Braden hates you. You know, that, no, that'll be my... That, I'm no. like, Braden likes you, and you have Seth hates yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, we got a yin and yang. That's I, perfect. I would, I'm, all, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I, I Hopefully, you know, we stay in touch. I'll probably blow a text in you every now and again. So, you know, I feel comfortable enough to I do did want to share with you guys this, because uh, I know you asked Seth about his uh, jaunt into hockey. Yeah. So... 
when I was in high school, because I came from the Maryland, Washington, D.C. area, we had a, I was in a, a journalism class writing for the school newspaper. And the Ca- Washington Capitals had a media day where they invite the students to practice. You got to interview the players after practice the whole night. Again, well before I ever got into hockey, sports, or anything. I found this letter from the Washington Capitals from the PR department from March of 1992. What year was the Lightning founded? 1992. The very first line, this came from Lou Corletto, who was the director of PR. The very first line of this letter, which blew my mind years later. <clears throat> Dear Greg, your recent participation in the Washington Capitals High School Media Day, hopefully was a valuable experience and one which we hope helps you in some way to formulate your future career. Wow. Blew my mind seeing that now years later, obviously been host for the Lightning for 16 seasons, but had no idea that that media day and that this letter would somehow be a precursor to the path that I went down and people, blew my mind and not, and I don't know, Kobe, if you know that not only does, does stuff for the lightning, but USF, I don't know if you're yep. still doing USF, USF like football, ba- basketball, football, basketball. You filled in for the Rays one time, tried out for them. I did. Um, tried out for the bucks. I, I think. Yep. Yeah, just announced. Um, I've been asked by the national hockey league to host the winter classic, uh, January 2nd at Fenway park. So, uh, Amazing. not only that, um, there's other future announcements for league events coming up this year that I've also been asked to host, but I'm, I'm waiting on those announcements to exactly announce what they are. Um, Hopefully you're too busy to record the block party. No, nope, I in. already told Breezer. I said, oh. I will work around the block party <laughs> yeah. uh, hours to make sure I'm here. But um, that's cool. See, and that's yeah. very, that, and that's, you know what? Those are Greg works here, you know, and I don't. And those are, that's what, Greg's obviously in a different position, but he's going to have so many things he's going to get to experience that he's going to be able to share with you guys. So. And bring to the block party. Yeah, and that's why that's why I'm excited about it. So that's very, very cool, man. You got to go to Sweden too, didn't you? Yeah, I was there. Actually, that kind of led um, the 2018 All-Star Game was here in Tampa and hosted that. And then obviously 2019, uh, which I'm sure on the block party, we'll get into the stories of Sweden and that night that the guys all bonded, that we were there at that sports bar, and then they went on to win the Stanley Cup. So hosted the Global Series. Obviously, the Stanley Cup was here 2020, even in a limited fashion, uh, you know, in a COVID world, then obviously Stanley Cup last year or 2021. And then uh, Vegas uh, hosted the All-Star Game in Vegas last year, Winter Classic next year, Jeez, and a lot man. more events. So. Yeah, the Winter Classic, that'll be fun. I'm, uh, you know, being a Florida boy, uh, I'm not going to lie, January in Boston outdoors, um, not stuff we're used to. So yeah. I've literally had to uh, send my wife on a mission to get me smart wool technology, which is like, you, do you know about these things? Like uh, the under- You're not going to need it. You're you not sure? going to need it. Yeah, outdoors in Boston? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> he says that because be he fine. plays hockey for a living. So it, he's, you know. It, isn't it always on the Winter Classic Day? Isn't the weather always like 74 degrees? Isn't it always warmer no, you're than thinking it's supposed of that to be? One we, that we, we had, had in Tahoe, we, right? when I was in Philly, oh, okay. we had, we played the Winter Classic in, in Fenway. Right. So it was, honestly, it was like one of the most magical things. It was like l- snow was like lightly sprinkling down. Wait. There was no wait. wind. That's it the was thing. Like they told perfect. me if there's no wind. It's not so bad, yeah. but if it's blustery and snowy, you get that wind chill, and that's it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah. So I'm preparing as best as I can, but um, again, to be on the league's call list is not only a testament, you know, to the work I've put in, but it's a testament to the Lightning. They're calling the Lightning's host to go to Boston versus Pittsburgh. What does that say about our team here in Tampa? Yeah, so. well, it says a lot about you, man. So, so. It says a lot about the organization. But there's first class all, all, all the way. It is. Yeah. It, it, I know people say it, but it, it really is. So. It really is. Well, we're going to miss you, Seth. I mean, that's just guys. a fact. When do you leave? Like, when's the what's the plan? Uh, like t- uh, tomorrow. Oh, like literally, you're out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be I'll be back in a couple of weeks, but yeah, I'm going out. I start on Monday, so okay. yeah, we're sitting here recording this. What is it, December first? So it is. yeah. Do we have any Lightning Kings games out there this season? Already had them. They oh, already had it. Yeah, right. they had them okay. a couple. Uh, maybe about a month oh, ago. So. Right. But, I guess to watch the lightning at four thirty or four o'clock every single day. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> as I'm doing the prep for the show, I'll have them on. So no, I can't always make it to the third period now, yeah, guys. No, I'm getting yeah. older. That's so true. so can we call in and like you know like is this just like a prank thing? Yeah. You know, like can we like call in Please and be do. like, oh, you know, that's gonna be great. Share some like little details yeah. about Seth. And Please do. We'll create uh, character names so yep. that you know that it's Greg and Kobe calling in. <laughs> show. That would be great. I'm sure. I'm sure my new show would, I would love that. So. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Thank, well, thanks, guys. Kobe, you've been great. Greg, uh, you know, you're, you've been awesome. You've been a great friend. You I to- appreciate you, man. finally told me, uh, you know, after all these years, how to get a LLC. So I did. I stopped getting 40% tax. Nice. On, on thanks for money. listening, yeah. finally. This guy's like in an LLC. I told you that a long time <laughs> yeah, ago, Yeah, so, so he's given you know, he's helped me out a little bit over the years. So, yes. uh, and he's the biggest hustler in Tampa Bay, and that's a compliment. I appreciate you, man. So, so uh, thanks, guys. And I, I can't wait to see where the blog party goes. We love you, and we miss you, and um, it's going to be great. 
great. We, trust me, you're in good hands with me and Kobe. Shalom. Shalom. Best, buddy. Thanks, buddy. And that is how we're going to wrap it up. Hey. So uh, on behalf of myself, Kobe, Seth Kushner, uh, the block, Bolts Block Party is uh, taking its course to the next chapter, and uh, we will talk to you guys soon. Who's going to be your first guest? I don't know. That's on Kobe to figure okay. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh.